What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a brand new top 10 and today guys we are discussing the top 10 first teams that you should get on the brand new Scorched Earth map. Now these are in my opinion the teams that you should get as soon as possible when you are able to based on your level, based on item requirements and everything like that. So this video is also sponsored by Nitrado today. You guys can host your own private dedicated servers with Nitrado by using my link down below and this will also help support the channel and they do make it very easy and streamline the process in order for you to customize your settings how you want you do have a general tab where you can set the basics however you can also go into the ini system of the game they also have a, the ability to host mods on the server as well and their customer support is always available and ready to help you i've been using the trado for literally years since the beginning of arc really and i have never had an issue with any of their servers and their customer support team has always been readily available to help me out when needed so guys what are you waiting for get your own nitrato server today and jump into the action right now so guys coming in at number 10 we have the anklio and the dodic now these guys are obviously higher on the list as you don't unlock their saddles till 34 and 39 so they will take a little bit of time to get up to that stage where you will be able to use them effectively but they are very simple teams to get. You simply need to knock them out. You can also kill them and find their babies. But they're very slow runners as well. So you don't really need to fear these guys all that much. You can easily kite them while knocking them out. You'll be able to see here. I'm, I'm literally just going for a little stroll in the Greenlands. Walking backwards from these guys while I train them. Super easy teams to knock out. They're also super easy to tame up by feeding them a variety of veggies or berries you will be able to tame up your own Anki and Dodic. Now, once you've tamed up your Anki, you'll then have the ability to harvest up the various resources located across the Scorched Earth map. The Anki is great for using it to harvest up metal and flint, and the Dodic is great for harvesting up rock and sand as well, which you will need quite a large amount of if you do plan on building the Adobe structure set throughout Scorched Earth. So I definitely recommend getting these guys once you get to the required level. Now coming in at number 9, we have the Thorny Dragon. Now the Thorny Dragon is a denizen of the Scorched Earth map and found exclusively on Scorched Earth. He does have a rather high a saddle level requirement though at level 40, so do keep that in mind. But you can find babies of these guys as well. And naturally they are pretty simple to knock out and tame. Simply trank them with your standard trank arrows and feed them meat to tame them up. Now, once you do have them tamed up, the saddle required is level 40, and these guys will be your primary source of harvesting up wood from the various trees located along Arc. These guys are your dedicated wood harvesters on the map. They do have a reduction for wood as well, so you will be using these guys to the best of your ability to harvest up a bunch of wood. Their saddle also acts as a smithy, and these guys are just generally really cool dinos, I reckon definitely worth investing into a decent thorny dragon so that you can go about getting all your wood that you will possibly need for building and for your resources now it also has a spine throwing attack that also deals damage and potentially slows down the prey as well now coming in at number eight we have the saber tooth now the saber tooth once again is pretty much dotted along the entire map of scorched earth you won't really struggle to find one of these guys they're a very simple knockout tame you are able to bowl them shoot them in the head they do take the headshot damage uh multiplier as well so you can potentially do extra trank damage to these guys they're very simple to knock out like that all you need to do then is simply feed them some meat which you can find from various sources across the map just like that we've knocked out a saber tooth in a couple of shots they do have a saddle requirement level on the higher side of things however which is why they are higher on the list at level 37 so Obviously, they're not the best sort of starting carnivore mount to get around on, but they are still pretty high up there. They are able to gather hide more effectively than their counterparts, and they're also able to jump and just deal decent damage. Now, you are able to take these guys into caves with you as well. Uh, another sort of downfall of the Sabertooths, however, and why they're higher on the list, is because their head is so close to the ground. A lot of enemy dinos are able to hit that headshot multiplier on them and deal extra damage. Now, obviously, we don't have that activated at the moment because we're in creative mode, but that's just something to be aware of when you do take them into caves and use them on the wild. But I make up for that by placing them higher on the list. Now, coming in at number seven, we have the Terror Birds. Now, once again, very similar to the Sabertooths, you will find these guys scattered sporadically across the map, but they're very simple teams once again to get. Simply bowler, headshot with some tranks, 
feed them some meat, and you are good to go. These guys have a slightly lower level saddle requirement than the Sabertooth, hence why they are lower on the list. You can see there at level 33 is the requirement for the Terror Bird saddle, and they only require basic resources to be able to craft the saddle. However, when tamed up, these guys have the added ability to take no fall damage. Due to their little flap ability, they are able to cut out any sort of fall damage. They are also able to move around quite large distances with this flap ability. You can see there, we're getting quite a lot of traction and movement just from using that. So I feel like on other maps, Terror Birds are definitely not used. And I feel like on Scorched Earth, they have a much more viable purpose. I'd really recommend getting Terror Birds. They do also have a slightly higher head. So they do take the headshot damage, but they don't take it as regularly as some of the other guys that have these smaller heads like the Sabertooth and the Diawolves. So do keep that in mind as well when using the Terror Birds, but they're really good at just pretty much your basic small carnivals. So I wouldn't sleep on the Terror Bird at all for Scorched Earth. And who doesn't want to run around on a giant dodo? Let's get real here, people. Now coming in at number six, we have the Direwolf. Now on Scorched Earth, the Direwolves actually hunt in solo, solo packs. They hunt individually. So you can actually find a dire wolf on its own and not get absolutely shredded by the pack while you bowler and knock it out. So it makes dire wolves really viable to use on Scorched Earth because you don't have to worry about getting absolutely decimated by the entire pack. And you saw some of them do even have children as well running around. So we can actually claim this baby dire wolf and lose it to a scorpion while it tries to kill us. But you know, they're easier teams to get when they're not in a pack constantly trying to kill you and they don't have that alpha pack buff. So all you need to do is simply bowler it and knock it with a couple of Trancos, feed it some meat and you'll have yourself your very own dire wolf. Now the cool thing about dire wolves is that they're really strong once you start getting a couple of them. They also have the unique ability to tell when a prey item or victim is low. So you saw there the Morilotops was on about half health and that little yellow uh, sort of health icon came up that obviously means the morella tops is low on health the darker it gets the closer it is to death so you can use that to go ahead and fundamentally kill creatures and get a bunch of xp in the process now these guys also have the ability to jump really well they don't require a saddle so the level requirement for these guys is fundamentally zero you just need to be able to sustain them and survive uh obviously knocking them out they also have the sniff ability where they are able to detect uh, hidden items. So potentially if you have a treasure map, you can use these guys to try and find the treasure source. These guys are just really good. Obviously, once you expand your die wolf pack and get a whole bunch of them as well, they will start dealing a crap ton more damage. Definitely do not sleep on the die wolves on Scorched Earth, especially for starting out. Now coming in at number five, we have the Lamantria. Possibly the first flyer that you will get on Scorched Earth as the other flyers are much higher level and their saddle level requirement is also much higher than the Lamantria. You do need to be level 36 in order to craft the Lamantria saddle. It is a bowler tame as well. However, you do need to be careful with the Lamantrias because they are very capable of dying quickly due to the fact that they have low health but very high torpor. So the best way to go about tranking the Lamantra is to bowler it first, then building a tent over the top of it. This will ensure that your Lamantra is trapped once the bowler runs out and it won't actually be able to get out of the tent. I can't even open the bloody tent. You are still able to shoot the Lamantra through the tent as well. You can see there if we open up the tent, the Lamantra is now stuck inside of the tent and you can take your time going about shooting and tranking out the Lamantria because it does display that mist attack that will slow you down, preventing you from pretty much chasing after it if you are hit by it. But just like that, we've got our first Lamantria knocked out and then you then just need to feed it a bunch of uh, berries. You can obviously feed it crops as well if you want to, but you will probably struggle to find crops at the start of the game. So berries is probably your best bet. Like I mentioned, its saddle is learnt at level 36 and it's made from the basic resources of chitin slash keratin, fiber and hide. Now, once you've got your Lamantria tamed up, you probably won't be spending too much time in the sky with it. It doesn't have the greatest amount of stamina or weight for that matter. So I would recommend pumping a little bit of stamina and weight into it as well. This one is only level 31, but it does make the game much different when you are able to fly around and get to locations that you couldn't get to previously. 
So you definitely do want to get a flyer as soon as possible. There are obviously Argies and Tappies on this map as well as Wyverns. They do require a higher level saddle and Wyverns are slightly more difficult to get when starting out as well. Now guys, coming in at number four, we have the Raptor. One of the first carnivores you will probably tame up on Scorched Earth if you come across them. They're very easy to tame. Bowler and a simple Trank Arrow to the head is generally enough to knock one of these guys out. You obviously could pump a couple more Trank Arrows into their head, but they're very easy and they're very similar to the other dinos that have been on this list. The other reason that they are slightly higher is because of their saddle level requirement being slightly lower than the rest. At level 18, you are able to mount your Raptor and use it to get around the map. You are also able to find their saddles much more frequently in supply drops I've found as well. So they're really good for that as well. Now these guys are also very easy to tame up an army of them and to breed a bunch of them. And their eggs and maturation timer isn't really all that slow. So you can do it rather quickly. You are also able to use weapons on the back of the Raptor as well. So you can actually use that to tame up some of the higher level mounts as well. At some point once you've reached that point in the game. You can see here we've got this terror bird. We're just going to bowler it run away. We can still do damage to targets and victims around us as well. Dealing pretty decent damage. Once you obviously get a pack of them and it's very easy to get a pack. You will start doing a lot more damage. But for getting around the map at first starting. It's definitely worth investing in a raptor. Now guys, coming in at number three, we have the Procoptodon. You tame yourself a decent Procoptodon, it will literally last you the entire game. Now, the best way I've found to get these guys is to trap them with wooden billboards. Literally, the moment that you find one and it stops moving, spam the billboards around it as quick as you can because it will start taking off again. This is your best way to go about taming one of these guys and getting them trapped. Because if you do start shooting at them, they will run away from you and they're very fast. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get them. Trust me. You're not gonna be able to get them. It's it's gonna be a very difficult process, and you don't want that. You just want a nice easy time to try and get these guys. You can see here we've kind of got him stuck. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty well stuck. I don't think he's going anywhere out of that. It is only a level 10 one, however, obviously you will be try to find higher level ones, and you can find the babies as well. So if you're struggling to actually tame an adult, try and find one with a baby. Simply kill the adult and you can claim the baby. Once you've got them trapped, all you need to do then is simply knock them out. Obviously, they are a standard knockout tame. You can feed these guys uh, rare mushrooms to tame up. You can also feed them the plant species Y seeds as well. Rare mushrooms are still the best way to go about taming these guys, however. And you will possibly need to protect them while they are taming up as well from any sort of bad guys that want to try and kill them. Obviously, billboards and spike walls will be your best bet to defend these guys while they're asleep. Now, these guys do have a slightly higher level in the saddle department. They also require quite a few more resources. But if you've tamed up some of the previous guys and haven't even got them saddled up and you're just using them to kill stuff, you should be able to come up with the 500 hide, the 150 pelt, uh, and the fiber as well that you can get. Metal ingots are obviously going to need to be made at a refining forge, but you want to try and get this saddle made up as quick as possible because these guys will be your best bet for getting around the Scorched Earth map. Outside of Flyers, these guys are absolutely incredible with their massive jump distance, their huge stamina pool, the ability to carry other survivors in their pouch, as well as other baby dinos, and their ability to harvest up berries and kick away potential predators makes these guys really great for getting around the entirety of the Scorched Earth map. You definitely should not be sleeping on the Procoptodons. If there's one team that you should definitely get out of this list, it is Procoptodons. Now guys, coming in at number two, we have the Jaboa. Obviously, this guy is key to surviving across Scorched Earth. He will tell you when there are encroaching storms coming and when to prepare for them. So he has four different varying signals that will alert you to which storm is on its way. And these guys are super easy to knock out. They will probably be one of the first creatures you come into contact with. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I don't think this guy should be number one. Because outside of the storm buff that he provides you to let you know that the storms are coming, that's all he sort of does. So he's not really incredibly useful, but at the same time he is. It's a little bit of a conundrum. But these guys are super easy to tame up as well. So you just need to spend a little bit of time punching one in the face, chuck some berries in, and then you'll have your very own weather detector ready to go. Now guys, coming in at number one, we have the Morellatops. Now the Morellatops are actually really tanky dudes and they only have a saddle level requirement of level 11. So generally these guys will probably be one of the first teams that you will get and they are definitely not to be slept on. 
These guys wander all around the map of Scorched Earth. You'll find them pretty much everywhere. They will sometimes be in packs, but they do pack a formidable punch when they do attack. They also have really cool looking colors. Now, another perk of these guys being such a low level is that you'll also find their saddles in low level drops. Bear with me here. This is going to be a little bit crazy. I have loot level set to the default setting and check out what we've got in this supply crate. An Ascendant Morella Top Saddle with 146 armor. I did not put this here. I literally just stumbled upon this and we've already got an Ascendant Armored Saddle with that much armor on it. These guys are really good. They hold your water for you. You are able to stock up on your water and they can fill it up at any watering hole. They do a mad amount of damage. They've got a variety of attacks. You definitely do not want to sleep on getting the Morella Tops tamed up first as these guys are just super incredible. And you can easily tame a pack of them up and breed them as well. They do lay eggs as well, so you don't really have to worry about raising the offspring as soon as they hatch or give birth, I should say. You can raise them from an egg whenever you deem to. Now, due to them as well being so uh, spread out across the map, you'll generally find a lot of them with babies as well. So if you don't have the actual necessary requirements to knock one out, you can kill them and then simply claim the baby for yourself. And you can see as well, these guys are really fast to run around on. This one is, I, I don't remember them being this fast, but it's kind of crazy. They do have two standard attacks as well. A knockback attack, which is that one, and it is slightly stronger than their primary attack as well. Like I mentioned as well, you can drink water out of them as well, and you can also fill your water containers. So do not sleep on these guys. They also apparently can irrigate now in the new Scorched Earth Ascendant. So that's a really cool addition. 100% these guys should be your first team to get on the brand new Scorched Earth map. So guys, that is the dinos you should be taming first on the Scorched Earth map. Let me know what you thought of them. Let me know what you would change. A quick mention out to the vultures. They're actually really good shoulder mounts that you can get as well. Relatively easy, simply tranking them and feeding them spoiled meat. And they will attack on your shoulder while you are attacking other dinos. I would really recommend getting some vultures as well for yourself. But guys, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more and I'll catch you in the next one.